Howdy. This video is on a henderson hasselbach equation. The henderson hasselbach equation gives us an easy way to calculate the pH of a solution that contains both a weak acid and a conjugate base. It also helps us understand solutions that contain weak acids and conjugate base a little bit better to be able to choose buffers and acid indicators better. What you should be able to do after watching this video is be able to derive the henderson hasselbach equation and know what approximations were used. You should be able to use the henderson hasselbach equation to calculate the pH of a weak acid conjugate based solution. You should also be able to use the henderson hasselbach equation to better understand um, solutions that contain weak acids and conjugate bases. Now, typically, if we're asked about the hydrogen ion concentration, hydroxide ion concentration, pH, or pOH of something, the first question we have to ask is is a strong acid or strong base? is a weak acid or weak base. If it's a strong acid, strong base, they completely disassociate, so we do not need to do equilibrium problems. If it's a weak acid or weak base, we have to determine the equilibrium reaction involved, find the equilibrium constant, and do the equilibrium problem. So for instance, if we're asked about what's the pH of 0.01 molar solution of acetic acid, we also first have to ask ourselves, okay, is that a strong acid, weak acid, strong base, or weak base? And so acetic acid is an organic acid, all organic acids are weak acids, and so it is a weak acid, meaning that we're going to have to do an equilibrium problem. Now, the equilibrium reaction involved is going to be the reaction corresponding to Ka for the acid. And so it could be either acetic acid going to hydronium plus acetate ion, or water plus acetic acid going to hydronium ion plus acetate ion. Remember, hydronium ion H3O plus is the same as H plus, and liquid water, all solids of liquids do not appear in equilibrium expressions if we're assuming ideal solutions. And so those two reactions are completely equivalent. Now the equilibrium constant for that is the Ka of 1.8 times 10 minus 5. We can get that from a table. Now to determine the pH, we have to determine the hydronium ion concentration, which again is the same as the hydrogen ion concentration. We can use an ice table, initial change equilibrium. And so we're told that initially we have 0.01 molar of that acetic acid. We're assuming that we initially have zero of the hydronium ion and acetate ion. Now when X of the acetic acid disassociates, we're going to get X of the hydronium ion, X of the um, acetate ion, and the equilibrium is going to be the initial plus a change. Now notice our Ka is very, very small, 1.8 times 10 minus 5. And so remember, equilibrium constants are products over reactants. And so if it's very, very small, it means you're going to have very little products compared to the reactants. And so X should be really, really small because only a little bit of the reactants will actually react. And so what we can do is actually assume that X is negligible compared to 0.01. Um, now what we can do is plug in, if we don't want to make that assumption, we can multiply the things, plug these expressions into the expression, multiply it out, and solve using quadratic equation. The approximation just makes the math a little bit easier and a little bit faster. And so once we make our approximation, we have our ex equilibrium expression of products over reactants, so it would be hydronium ion times acetate ion concentration divided by acetic acid concentration. And so x times x gives us x squared divided by 0 0.01. And that equals our Ka. And so x squared is equal to 0 0.01 times the Ka. We take the um, equilibrium constant on both sides and we get x equals 4.24 times 10 minus 4. Now, according to our ice table, at equilibrium, the hydronium ion concentration is x and the acetate ion concentration is x. So we just calculated x, which is 4.24 times 10 minus 4. Now, again, to get the pH, we just take the minus log of that, and that gives us a pH of 3.37. Now, so that's, we were given just a weak acid. Now, what if we're given a weak acid and its conjugate base? We can actually start with the same reaction. So we have acetic acid going to the acetate ion plus hydrogen ion. This time we're using a slightly different reaction, but again, remember it's completely equivalent. So initially we're told that we have 0.7 molar of the acetic acid and 0.6 molar of the acetate ion, zero of the hydrogen ion. And so one X of the acetic acid reacts, we'll get X of the acid ion and X of the hydrogen ion, and equilibrium is going to be initial plus the change. Now, notice that our K is the same, and so again, we should think that only a little bit is going to react. And so before we said that X was negligible compared to initial concentration, and so if X is negligible compared to 0.7, it should also be negligible compared to 0.6. And so this time we can make the approximation that X is negligible compared to 0.7 and 0.6, and so that gives us this. Now we have our equilibrium expression, products of reactants, coefficients become excellence, pure solids, pure liquids do not appear. And we can do something a little bit different this time instead of actually um, solving for x, which we could relatively easily. We can start with equilibrium expression. So Ka is equal to acetate ion times hydrogen ion divided by acetic acid. And so the hydrogen ion concentration is going to be equal to the acetic acid concentration divided by acetate ion and that fraction times the Ka. Now notice that the acid 
concentration, base concentration are the initial concentrations. Now, if we plug in the numbers, 0.7 divided by 0.6, that fraction times 1.8, we get the hydrogen ion concentration is 2.1 times 10 to the minus 5, and that gives us a pH of 4.68. Now, our approximation was that x is negative compared to 0 0.7, 0 0.6, and so 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, oh, sorry, 2.1 times 10 to the minus 5 is negligible to 0 0.7, 0 0.6, so our approximation was good. And so if we think about what we did, again, we had the... Um, hydrogen ion concentration equal to the initial concentration of the acid divided by initial concentration of the base, that fraction times Ka. Now, if we take the negative log of both sides and do a little bit of algebra, what we actually end up with is that pH equals pKa plus log base over acid. Now, again, the concentration of the base, concentration of the acid are the initial concentrations. And you can only use the henderson hasselbalch equation when you have a conjugate acid-base pair and when there's no strong acid or strong base involved. And so it's kind of cool. Also notice that from the henderson hasselbalch equation, the pH of a solution that contains both a weak acid and a conjugate base is dominated, determined largely by the pKa of the acid, and then it's adjusted by the ratio of the acid and the conjugate base. And so when you're dealing with a buffer and you're looking for a buffer in a certain pH range, you, find, you try to find an acid that has a pA, pKa sorry, close to the pH for the buffer. Now, and remember that pKa is minus log of the Ka. And again, remember this is only for um, conjugate, weak acid conjugate base pairs. And so using the hessel hasselbalch equation, you can actually calculate the ratio of concentrations given the pH. You can calculate the pH given the concentrations. You can calculate the Ka for a buffer with a specific pH. And so initially we saw that for strong acid, strong base, you know, complete disassociate, no acclimate problem. If you had a weak acid or a weak base, you'd have to do an acclimate problem like we did with the acetic acid at the beginning. If you have a mixture of a weak acid and a conjugate base, you could do the acclimate problem, or you could use the henderson hasselbalch equation. The henderson hasselbalch equation is a little bit faster. And so a question you might see in the very near future is what is the pH of your blood if the ratio of bicarbonate ion to carbonic acid is 20 to one? And so the Ka of the carbonic acid is 4.5 times 10 to the 7th. pKa is minus log of the Ka, which gives us a pKa of 6.35. We have the henderson hasselbalch equation. Now notice that in the henderson hasselbalch equation, the absolute value of the concentrations does not matter. It's actually a ratio of the concent initial concentrations of base over the acid. And so in the problem, we were told 21, and so that's just a fraction. And so we're in, for the pH, it's going to be equal to 6.35 plus log of 20, which is 20 over 1. And that gives us a pH of 7.65. You know, so biological systems often have buffers try to maintain a constant pH because proteins, the second structure actually depends on pH. Human blood is typically try to be 7.35 to 7.45. You know, one of the buffers in the human body is the um, bicarbonate ion, bicar uh, carbonic acid, but there's also other, bu other buffers and it's a little bit more complex than presented here. Another question you can see is what is the pH of a solution that contains five moles of HF and one mole of sodium fluoride? Now you have to recognize that sodium fluoride is going to disassociate into sodium ions and fluoride ions. If I have a one molar solution of sodium fluoride, I have one molar sodium ions and one molar fluoride ions. I have no sodium fluoride molecules. And again, we can remember, you know, which is acidic, basic, or neutral. The sodium ions are alkaline metal ions, and so they are neutral. The fluoride ions, remember our conjugate base is a weak acids, and so they're going to be um, slightly basic. And so if we go back to our problem, what is the pH of a solution of contains five moles of HF, one mole of sodium fluoride? We neglect the sodium because it's negligible compared to the table we just looked at. And so we have the henderson hasselbalch equation, pH equals pKa plus log concentration base over acid. Now, the concentration is moles over liters of solution. It's in the same solution, so the volume has to be the same. And so the henderson hasselbalch equation is cool. You know, you can use concentrations, you can use ratios of concentrations. You can also just use moles because again, same solution, volume's the same. And so um, concentration over concentration is going to be the same as moles base over the moles of acid. And often when you're doing like a titration problem, it's easier to just to keep track of the moles and then use the moles for the henderson hasselbalch equation. And so we have pH equals pKa plus log moles base over moles acid. 
And so our Ka is 6.3 times 10 minus fourth. Our pKa is minus log of that, which is 3.2. And we have um, point, we have one mole of the fluoride ion, five moles of HF. And so our pH is 3.2 plus log of one over five, which gives us 2.5. And so that gives us a pH of 2.5. And so again, henderson hasselbalch equation, very helpful for calculating pH, for calculating ratios of base of the acid, for choosing pKa's of buffers. It also helps understand solutions. Again, the um, pH of a weak acid um, con conjugate base solution is dominated by the pKa and then adjusted by the ratios. And again, henderson hasselbalch equation is only appropriate for weak acid conjugate base. And you should remember that to go from the acid to the base, you just remove a hydron on. To go from the base to the acid, you just add a hydron on. Um, whether or not a compound acts as acid or a base depends on what it's reacting with. All buffers indicators are weak acid conjugate base pairs. And so again, henderson hasselbalch equation, very, very helpful for calculating solutions of pH with, that contain weak acid conjugate base. You cannot use the henderson hasselbalch equation if there's strong acid or strong base present. I hope this was helpful.